Sir, I was a smoker for 17 years. I quit because of what I'm going to talk about today, secondhand smoke. To be very honest, I did not quit for myself. I quit because I knew that secondhand smoke will severely affect the health of my daughter. I didn't want her to suffer because of my choice to smoke. The rights of smokers have to be protected. There are adults old enough to decide whether they want to smoke or not. But we need to make sure that others are not affected by their decision to smoke. Affected here is not just about not liking the smell of smoke or the discomfort of seeing the smoke. When I say affected, I mean you could die because of secondhand smoke. The World Health Organization has said that there is no safe level of exposure to secondhand smoke, which can cause coronary heart disease, stroke, and lung cancer. Those inhaling secondhand smoke are actually exposed to more chemicals than the smokers themselves. Side stream smoke, the main component in secondhand smoke, is four times more toxic than the smoke that a smoker inhales from the cigarette. I'm especially concerned about how secondhand smoke especially affects the vulnerable amongst us. According to the Ministry of Health, even the slightest exposure to secondhand smoke can harm babies and young children. For them, even a little is already too much. So for me, the most alarming thing is this. In 2016 alone, 383 people in Singapore died due to secondhand smoke. That is about one person dying every single day. We must do something. For years, many residents have reached out to me about their neighbours smoking at balconies and at windows. Secondhand smoke enters their homes and they feel helpless about the health risks facing their families. Mr Chia shared about how his baby cries whenever he inhales his neighbour's secondhand smoke. Mr Chia feels that he has tried everything. He has shut his window panels for most of the day and even installed a fan to blow the smoke away. Yet. Toxic fumes continue to enter his home. Zion, another helpless resident, is another helpless resident. Her baby suffered from a lung infection and her neighbour smokes. She says, quote, He smokes at midnight and the secondhand smoke drifts into our room when we are sleeping soundly, unquote. How much long-term damage will her baby suffer, she wonders. Another resident, Miss Lam, lives with her elderly parents. She often wakes up in the middle of the night to close the windows so that her parents are not affected by her neighbour's secondhand smoke. But this also means there is no ventilation in the home for fresh air. They don't sleep properly and they're stressed out. These are just some of the many concerns that residents have shared with me just over the past few weeks. Statistics show that they are not alone. In the first four months of this year, NEA received 11,400 complaints related to smoking a 20% increase from the last year. This increase was largely due to people smoking in or near homes. With more people working from home because of COVID-19, the number of cigarette smoke disputes escalated to the Community Mediation Centre, or the CMC, has quadrupled from two cases a month to now eight cases a month. Ms Lin is yet another example. She said that her family started having eye and throat irritation, headaches and nausea during the circuit breaker period due to the prolonged exposure to secondhand smoke. Her neighbour smokes seven to eight times a day, causing her to be, quote, literally bask in a cloud of smoke, unquote, every day. For Miss Lin and other Singaporeans, secondhand smoke is a silent assassin that poisons them in their own homes, and they have no way to run. So NEA has previously said that secondhand smoke is a, quote, neighbourly, unquote, issue. It is true. Neighbours should try to solve problems by talking to each other. And they do try. When it doesn't work, they seek mediation and support from the HDB, NEA, TC, RC, CMC, CDRT and MPs. A whole alphabet soup of authorities. Yet, many residents have found these channels ineffective. One such grievance was shared with me to me by Miss Anna. She suffered the secondhand smoke of a couple living below her unit for at least 10 years. The couple smoked throughout the day. She has applied for CMC mediation, but her neighbours refused to attend the mediation, citing their right to smoke within their own homes. Similarly, her MPs have told her that they are powerless and their hands are tied. These stories highlight why talk isn't enough. CMC mediation is voluntary and does not work when neighbours refuse to participate. Even when MPs want to help, they cannot seek help from law enforcement because there is no relevant law or regulation to enforce. A different solution is needed. 
The neighbourly issue of second-hand smoke is not the same as loud karaoke coming from the next door or wet laundry dripping from upstairs. It causes long-term health damage and death. It cannot be solved the same way we solve all these other neighbourly disputes. So the GPC for Sustainability and the Environment proposes that the Ministry ban residents from smoking near the windows or at balconies of their HDB flats and private apartments. This would minimise the effect that secondhand smoke has on their neighbours. Our proposal is not new. In the US, the US sorry, as well as several provinces of Canada, does not allow smoking in public housing. What's more, our proposal is very similar to what our NEA officers already do. They issue advisories to residents telling them, quote, not to smoke near the windows or at the balconies as a way to minimise the amount of cigarette smoke emitted from their premises, unquote. All our proposal does is to empower our officers to enforce their current advisory. In the past, NEA has also said that restricting people's action in HDB flats would be an, quote, intrusive regulatory approach, unquote. However, our laws already intrude on people's behaviours within their own homes. We ban residents from being nude in their own homes if people can see it. We ban residents from keeping cats in their own homes because we feel it might affect their neighbours. Just this much, this House passed my private member's bill, which bans the feeding of wildlife in any place, including private residences. So we do draw the line somewhere. Why do we draw the line at nudity, pets and feeding wildlife, but not at secondhand smoke, something that kills hundreds of people in Singapore a year? So I'm sure NEA is not unaware of the impact of secondhand smoke. After all, we do have existing laws that restrict someone from smoking in their cars in a no-smoking zone along Orchard Road if their windows are down. So all our GPC asks for is to mirror this restriction when it comes to our homes. Ultimately, our proposal seeks to balance the interests of both groups. We allow smokers to smoke within their homes as long as they stay away from windows and balconies. We allow non-smokers to avoid the perils of secondhand smoke. It's a win-win solution. One condominium in Singapore, Forest Residences, has already implemented this restriction on their own. Last year, an overwhelming 84.4% of residents voted in favour of it. We believe many other residents in HDB flats and private apartments would welcome such a restriction in their estates. Last but not least, our proposal is enforceable using existing technology already used on the ground. NEA has been using cameras to catch high-rise litter bugs. These surveillance cameras are focused only on the external facade of the housing units being investigated to capture the act of littering. It can even capture someone throwing cigarette butts out of their windows. These cameras have contributed to hugely increasing the number of successful enforcement actions from 10 in 2011 to over 1,200 in 2018. They are effective. Separately, NEA has also been using thermal surveillance cameras to catch residents smoking at prohibited areas such as common corridors, lift lobbies and staircase landings. These cameras can, quote, detect objects emitting high heat and capture images of the smoking offence, unquote. NEA can use all these existing technologies to catch those who smoke near windows and at balconies. We have years of experience fine-tuning the use and to minimise privacy intrusion and to maximise successful enforcement. What's missing now is just the legislation. If Minister's reply is that these technologies are not viable, then NEA should implement alternative solutions to facilitate enforcement. After all, when high-rise littering started killing people, we acted urgently to deploy solutions on the ground. Secondhand smoke near windows and balconies also kills people, and we should act on it with the same urgency. We must not let, quote, hard to enforce, unquote, be an obstacle to saving lives. Finally, I would like to share the experience of Mr. Su, like me, a former smoker. He shared with me that he used to enjoy sitting at his balcony with a coffee and a cigarette, and his neighbours would respond by slamming their balcony doors and windows. Mr. Su quit smoking after becoming a father, but now he finds the tables have turned. He is the one slamming the window now because he has neighbours who are now smokers. Belatedly, he realises the impact he has had on his neighbours. We cannot afford to wait for smokers in Singapore to reach this same realisation. So in conclusion, 
for the sake of the health and lives of our children, our elderly parents and other non-smokers, the GPC proposes that this government introduces a ban on smoking near windows and at the balconies of HDB flats and private apartments. This is a public health concern we cannot continue to deny and leave unresolved. Thank you. The Minister for Sustainability and Environment for a response. The Deputy Speaker, protecting Singaporeans against second-hand tobacco smoke has always been our priority. I thank Mr. Louis Ng for his proposal to curb second-hand smoke. Many members, including myself, have received similar suggestions. Let me assure everyone that my ministry is equally concerned about second-hand smoke. Indeed, I empathise with all who have suffered from this. We've always recognised the serious health risks from second-hand smoke. We first introduced smoking prohibition in omnibuses, cinemas and theatres in 1970 and have progressively expanded this to more public places. We were among the first globally to impose a nationwide smoking ban in the covered common areas of residential estates. Currently, smoking is prohibited in more than 32,000 places and we will do more. Singapore has introduced robust policies to discourage smoking, such as raising the minimum legal age of smoking and introducing standardised packaging for tobacco products. Through public education and nudges, we urge smokers to quit their habit. Consequently, the daily smoking prevalence has decreased from 18.3% in 1992 to 13.9% in 2010 and 10.6% in 2019. We continue to work on driving down smoking prevalence which will also reduce the incidence of secondhand smoke. Let me turn to the issue of secondhand smoke experience in homes. Of the 11,400 smoking complaints received in the first four months of 2020, 58% or 6,630 complaints were in residential estates. As more residents worked from home during the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been an uptick in smoking complaints in residential estates. 95% or 6,310 of these complaints were related to smoking in common corridors, staircases and void decks. The remaining 5% or 320 cases involve smoking in homes. NEA has prioritised surveillance at common areas, in particular common corridors, staircases and void decks at residential estates. Thermal cameras are also deployed at smoking hotspots. In the first half of 2020, NEA took 2,400 enforcement actions at these areas, a 37% increase from the same time period last year. For complaints of smoking in homes, NEA town councils and grassroots leaders take an educational approach and advise smokers to be considerate and not smoke near windows and balconies. Most smokers take heat except for a small group of recalcitrant smokers. For such cases, grassroots leaders, NEA and relevant agencies help to mediate between neighbours and discuss adjustments to be made. Affected residents can turn to the Community Mediation Centre. They can also raise the matter to the Community Disputes Resolution Tribunal or CDRT as a last resort. Between January 2019 and July 2020, 25 claims relating to excessive smoke caused by cigarettes or incense were filled with, were filed with the CDRT. Quite a number of claimants were able to resolve issues amicably without proceeding to the tribunal. Mr Ng and GPC members have proposed that we ban smoking at balconies and windows at homes. We are just as keen to resolve this issue and have carefully studied these suggestions. Unfortunately, besides the fact that such legislation could be highly intrusive, there are significant practical challenges in enforcement that limit effectiveness. First, enforcement will be challenging as capturing evidence of the smoking offence 
It's not 